Kia ora! Greetings to everyone! This franchise zoo is named Auraki and it's located in New Zealand. Our animal for today is a legendary lizard, the dragon. Its official name is the Komodo dragon, but it is also called the Komodo monitor. Its scientific name is Varanus komodoensis, but I prefer the term dragon. The world's largest lizard belongs to the class of reptiles, the order of scaled reptiles and the family of Varanidae. The sexual dimorphism is slight. It boils down to the fact that the female is slightly smaller than the male, but it can only be determined by the scales around the cloaca, and this is also uncertain, which is why zoos usually carry out DNA tests to determine without doubt the gender of the individuals. The male is on average 80-90 kg and it's 2.6 meter long. The female is nifty, it is on average between 68 and 73 kilos with a length of 2.3 meters. These are only average sizes. The largest dragon found was 3.13 meters long and weighed 166 kilos. Its legs only slightly lift its body off the ground, so it is unable to run although it still reaches a speed of 19 km per hour. And since only the fairy tale specimens have wings, the Komodo edition does not, it cannot fly fast. Actually, not even slowly. At least it has claws on its toes and can swim pretty good. Its body is strong, its elongated skull is equipped with strong jaws, its forked tongue is 30 centimeters long and it also smells with it. The length of its tail rivals the length of its body. Since there are no other large carnivorous animals in its habitat, the only competitors are other dragons. Compared to the fact that this is the largest living lizard, it was only discovered in 1911 when a pilot's small plane broke down and he was forced to land it in the sea near Komodo Island. I really don't think the dragons had anything to do with the malfunction, as they don't have wings and they do not breathe fire. When the pilot returned home, he reported his experience to the scientists, who of course did not believe him. If only they had known that it was not the pilot who discovered it first, but the natives who had been familiar with dragons for a long time. Anyway, because of this, it was only described for science in 1912 by Peter Antonis Owens, who was a Dutch scientist and director of the Java Zoological Museum and Botanical Gardens. In 2009, animal remains were found in Australia that were similar to the Komodo dragon, only larger in size. This is the genus Megalania, Varanus priscus, and is said to be the ancestor of the Komodo dragon. It is estimated to have died out sometime at the end of the Pleistocene, about 40,000 years ago, and was two to three times the size of the Komodo dragon. Imagine a 9 meter long dragon. Where did they turn to? To the stars, Bowen, to the stars. Oh, this is not the Dragonheart movie, sorry. So they turned to the island of Timor, which is between Australia and Flores. There were some findings that are between the size of the current dragon and Megalania. Because of these, the Komodo dragon is believed to have originated from Australia. Flores Island is located east of Java and is one of the most important islands of Indonesia, part of the Lesser Sunda Islands. The Lesser Sunda Islands consist of several islands, most of which belong to Indonesia and the other part to East Timor. Special species live on these islands and for example 17 of the 273 bird species that live here are endemic meaning they live only in this small area on Earth. The endemic mammals of the area are the Sunda long-eared bat, the Lombok flying fox, the endangered Komodo rat and the endangered flora shrew. 
Komodo dragons also live exclusively here, but not only on Komodo Island, but on some surrounding islands belonging to the lesser Sunda, such as Rinka, Gili Motang, Gili Dasami, and the western part of Flores Island. A population also lived on the island of Padar, but in the 1980s those practically starved to death, probably because the ungulates on the island were hunted down by poachers. So today they live on a total of five islands. With the exception of Flores Island, all other islands where dragons live belong to the Komodo National Park. The Komodo dragon is an apex predator and has no other natural enemies besides humans. It has an excellent sense of smell, which it detects with its tongue and can smell its food from a distance of 4 kilometers. Its sight and hearing, however, are not so good. They say it is rarely able to hunt down live big game, deer, pig, monkey, but it likes carrion and it prefers to feed on smaller animals. Eats beetles, caterpillars and other insects, smaller animals and eggs, but it even commits cannibalism against its own offspring. It is a solitary animal except in mating season, but they go to the carrion in groups. They don't care about chewing, they don't have teeth suitable for such things. They swallow whole everything they can get their hands on, I mean their mouths on. Meat, bones and even the skull. Well, it has a lot of calcium. The dragon has 60 sharp teeth, which it uses to tear meat chunks. Since it does not avoid the bone but also eats it, its teeth may break out, but new teeth grow in their place. A Komodo dragon replaces its teeth five times in its lifetime. It eats what it catches, so in several cases there were reports of human victims. This is not a fairy tale. Dragons generally avoid humans, but between 1974 and 2012, 24 attacks were recorded, some of which were fatal. These were mostly locals living around the national park. Its bite is fatal for all animals, because even if an animal escapes after being bitten, it will die within a few days and the dragon waits for this. In such cases, it often follows the victim patiently. They said that it can rarely hunt big game, but in order to find a larger carcass, something has to hunt it down, and since it has no other competition, and its bite is fatal, it means that it still hunts big game, but not with the usual methods. For a long time it was thought that the pathogens in the dragon's mouth spread through its bite to such an extent that the victim dies of blood poisoning within a few days, but more recent researchers rules this out and attributes the cause of death to the poison glands in the mouth. With this they can even kill the water buffaloes, not to mention deer and humans. They only have a chance if they run away before the bite. What's that if not hunting? A Komodo dragon can eat up to 80% of its own weight in one meal. Under their skin they have thousands of tiny bones called osteoderms. These are hard bony deposits that form over the course of a dragon's life. As an apex predator, it does not need protection against other animals, but this uh, built-in chain shirt can provide protection against other Komodo dragons during wrestling. At the same time, I assume that since it swims well and dragons have been seen several kilometers from the mainland, so it can travel between the islands, it also provides some protection against sea attacks. The mating season is in late spring, around May, when the males fight each other. They practically throw themselves at each other and wrestle until the weaker one surrenders by lying flat on the ground. They don't kill each other, they just decide who is stronger and will have the right to mate. The loser will not have a chance to mate as this will be a big challenge even for the winner, as the females don't give up easily either. 
After fertilization, the female digs a tunnel at least 2 meters deep, and at the end of it, a cavity big enough to comfortably fit herself, and lays her 25 30 eggs, which are the size of a goose egg. Afterwards, it buries the hole and the tunnel. Sometimes it can lay eggs in abandoned nests of orange footed scrub fowls. The offspring hatch from the eggs after 7 months, during which time the female stands guard at the entrance without food. It doesn't eat for 7 months, and it is living off the fat reserves from its tail, so it is understandable why the female does not give itself cheaply. The young hatch from the eggs in autumn and are very different from the adults. Their pattern is vivid, the color of their skin is similar to tree bark and leaves, and they are very agile. After hatching they dig themselves out from underground and quickly climb the trees and hide there. This hiding was due to the tendency towards cannibalism. If they survive adolescence, their lifespan can be up to 35 years. One of the most unique features of the Komodo dragon is that it is capable of virgin birth. At the beginning of 2007, news made their way into the world press that the dragon offspring born in the London and Chester zoos had been proven beyond a doubt to be virgin birds. That is, biologically a female does not need a male to give birth to offspring which is rare in vertebrates. Very rare. Another interesting thing is that the female can only give birth to a male through virgin birth. So if it doesn't have a male to procreate with, it creates one for itself. The Komodo dragon has been a much coveted species for zoos ever since its discovery but for a long time Indonesia only gave it to foreign zoos on extremely rare occasions and it was rarely possible to buy it. Although it is currently bred in captivity, not many places have it. For example, only a dozen zoos in Europe. The first dragon arrived in Hungary at the end of April 2008. This one came from Chester Zoo and is one of those from Virgin Birds. In February 2010, a couple came to Nyiregyháza Zoo, directly from the capital of Indonesia, from the Jakarta Zoo, as part of a long-term cooperation agreement. In 2021, the IUCN moved the Komodo dragon from vulnerable to endangered, citing rising sea levels and climate change. Approximately 1400 Komodo dragons live in their natural habitat. If you've gotten this far with me, thank you for watching. Don't forget to press the like, write a comment and be subscribed. You can also opt in for membership. Check out the video in the right button part. Have a lovely day.